there's kind of a very quick one that I want to get into because there are some stories that you have in the books that just I've seen in other places too. And I, I kind of am curious about this. So um, you have a couple of instances where, and this is not just in the Shenandoah Valley, but I mean, I had Jeff for, for it on here for, mm -hmm. on an interview a while back. And we talked about like slave, convicted slaves being moved to Louisiana. Um, and the one thing I, I, I kind of was thinking about as I was reading through your book and you kind of indicated that we have individuals that are convicted of crimes and some of them uh, then sent for prison and et cetera. I'm kind of wondering what happens to them after emancipation does, um, because they're convicted as slaves, does that change anything when, when emancipation takes place? Does that change their status? Mm -hmm. Do they get released? Um, mm -hmm. I'm really like, that, that's something I have no idea about. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. Um, and so, you know, again, perhaps this is, let me answer this in a, in a couple of different ways. So I think that, you know, part of the frustration is um, there, there are these instances, you know, in the, in the decades prior to the war um, where, where enslaved people are incarcerated for whatever crime it might be, including, um, you know, attempted arson. And, you know, we look at the case of, of uh, Jerry, for instance, in Clark County, Virginia, who was um, arrested because he purchased matches um, in Berryville because he wanted to burn things after John Brown's raid on Harper's Ferry. And arson was, you know, rampant, um, you know, throughout the valley as enslaved people were looking for ways to show their support uh, for John Brown's, for John Brown's attack. Uh, he was um, actually sentenced for execution, but ultimately there was this, this appeal made um, on behalf of some residents of Clark County saying, don't do this. And again, they weren't making this because they loved Jerry. Um, they were asking Governor Letcher of Virginia to, to stay his execution and just lock him up um, for the remainder of his life because they didn't want to draw attention to the fact that enslaved people actually were aware of what Brown was doing. And even though they didn't go to Harper's Ferry, we're still trying to think, figure out how can we try to undermine slavery right. um, where we live. And so, you know, we, we don't know in that, in that instance, what happens to him. So again, this is, this is kind of that, that frustrating aspect of things here. Um, I would, I would assume, um, you know, certainly by the time Robert Milroy came to the Valley in 1863 and began implementing the Emancipation Proclamation, uh, that he would have been released. I mean, Milroy was a great admirer of John Brown but again, it's it's one of those frustrating things where where we just don't know if if the jails were opened up um, and those types of things. But I will say you have these these instances during the war where where there are there are crimes that are committed, mm -hmm. and you have you know Union soldiers are trying to figure out how to deal with them. Right. Um, you know you have instances in in the spring of 1861, where there was a, an attempted insurrection, and I write about this in the book, and Confederate authorities, they quashed, you know, they, they crushed it pretty quickly, and they arrested some and they executed others. Um, but again, there's no record of, well, what happens to those dozen or so individuals who were arrested. Mm. But then you have this, this, other, this other angle to things where you have, uh, during August of 1862, you have one of the hotels in Winchester, the Union Hotel, no longer stands, was used as a, as a, as a quarters, as a barracks mm -hmm. for freedom seekers. And, you know, we, we seem to forget that we're writing about human beings. Right. And, and when you have a lot of human beings put into tight quarters in stressful situations, fights break out. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's one episode I write about in the book where uh, there's a group, there's a, a child who was injured very severely, falls over a banister in the hotel. Um, there's a number of African-American women who get into a scuffle. And one woman just hates everyone in that building and decides, I'm going to burn it down. Um, and federal soldiers arrested her on charges of, you know, assault and arson. She ended up being whipped publicly. 
um, as a result of that. So uh, again, it goes back to your earlier question about, you know, some of the, the frustrating aspects, mm-hmm. what happens to these individuals, um, and then, you know, also looking at how, how union soldiers have to, to try to enforce law as well. Um, you know, and, and there are all these types of stories that, that course throughout the book. The, the closest I could say, um, you know, there's a story of George who was enslaved in Berkeley County. He was actually um, locked up by Robert Patterson, Union General in 1861, when federal soldiers were not yet allowed to uh, to bring freedom to individuals and Patterson locked him up and and my suspicion is um, that when Patterson evacuates Martinsburg um, he is let out by one uh, one of Patterson's soldiers and so you know that that's as close as we can get to looking at at this but again that's that's 1861 so that's even before emancipation wow the silences are just frustrating. Yeah. Um, 